This is my Kamiak Butte Term Report presentation for SOE 300. My name is Ryan Freeman. Let's begin. The ancient eastern Washington shoreline. Some of the oldest rocks in Washington state are located north of the Palouse and can be dated back to the supercontinent Rodinia, which formed during the Paleozoic. Evidence comes from areas of localized shallow water carbonates and siliclastic depositions in the northeastern Washington. During the breakup of Rodinia 670 million years ago, the region spanning north-south from current-day Spokane to Pullman became a shoreline for the new continent Laurentia. The shoreline brought with it large deposits of sand. The sand became sandstone through the geological process of sedimentation. As the new Rodinia shoreline transitioned into a subduction zone, these sediments and sandstone were brought deeper into Earth's crust. The heat and pressure from within transformed these sandstones into hard quartzite. This is the same erosion resistant sandstone that is the primarily makeup of Kamiak Butte. As Rodinia subduction pulls the oceanic plate underneath primordial Washington, it brings with it a series of large volcanic arcs. Through the accretion process, these island arcs became the benchmarks for the rest of Washington state. The Columbia River Befault basalt group is a series of basalts flooding events erupted for millions of years out of fissures of southeast Washington and northern Oregon. These fissures were likely caused by a hot spot magnetism. This is a result of large molten rock in the mantle rising towards the crust eventually breaking through the surface. The Columbia River basalt group is generally considered to have begun around 17 million years ago during the Miocene these fissures events continued spewing basalt frequently for millions of years until finally ending in the late Miocene six million years ago. From Washington to Northern Oregon and spanning along the Columbia River to the Pacific Ocean, this is one of the largest igneous provinces on Earth. The Columbia River basalt group is estimated to have a total volume of 210,000 kilometers cubed and an aerial extent of 208,000 kilometers squared. The basalts covered the quartzite mountains, leaving Kamiak Butte to only a thousand feet in elevation, opposed to what have, could have been a much higher peak if not surrounded by the basalt. From 2.6 million years ago to 12,000 years ago, Washington was experiencing an ice age. During the Pliocene, the ice age brought glacial coverage to more, to northern half of Washington state. The Cordillon ice sheet was the main ice sheet extending down from northern Canada. These glacial lobes advanced and retreated multiple times, carving out most of western Washington and leaving the catastrophic flooding in the east. The ice sheet that extended in northern Washington and Idaho temporarily disrupted the Columbia River drainage as well as the Clark Fork, eventually damming glacial Lake Missoula. A large volume of water, approximately 250,000 kilometers cubed, began to hold behind the dam. During deglaciation, the thinning of the ice dam failed and could no longer retain such massive volumes of water behind its walls. The dam burst with enormous velocity and strength, with this massive flooding event carved out this channeled scab line in Columbia Valley of eastern Washington before draining to the Pacific Ocean. After the catastrophic floods, the paleosolos of the Washington state spread via the wind. Loess is wind-blown soil and sediment and is the main composition for the soils across eastern Washington. From glacial retreat to present, the wind has been blowing soils across eastern Washington, accumulating, accumulating 15 to 35 meters of soil in some places. These rich soils, along with the non-permeable basalt layer beneath, combine to form some of the most fertile growing lands in the United States. The basalt allows for water accumulation that plants can access during dry seasons. This mechanism allows for significantly less irrigation in the surrounding Palouse, and also means the amount of water plants and crops use and have access to is determined by temperature and of course the amount of precipitation annually. Kamiak Butte and the surrounding Palouse region experience a modified maritime climate during the cooler winter months that transitions towards a mild maritime continental climate in the summer. Kamiak Butte typically endures a wide range of temperature extremes as seen in the temperature figure here. Winters on the Butte are colder than the surrounding region because of its higher elevation and that comes with a mild to considerable precipitation in the form of rain or snow that turned Kamiak Butte into a frozen wonderland. 
During the summer, the days are usually warm, dry, and clear with average temperatures in the upper 50s. The warm summer usually stretches into the fall as temperatures slowly decrease, approaching the new year. Kimia Butte is a unique geologic location that many say hosts own microclimates. As the air and moisture with clouds move across the loose, the clouds must release their water content to keep going over the butte. Elevation is a key player in how wet Kimia Butte can get. This causes the more precipitation in the surrounding region, but the most of the precipitation can be measured in the winter months. As shown here, beginning in late October, precipitation values exponentially increase into the late winter season where precipitation is mainly falling as snow on the surface. Transitioning into the warmer spring precipitation turns back into rain and variable, but decreases steadily to the minimum precipitation that occurs over the hot, dry summer. Little to no rain occurs during these months. Biomes of Kamiak Butte. The biome on the north facing slope is covered by a treetop canopy that contains many plant species within its understory. This is commonly known as the forest biome. Forest biomes are small areas of trees with open canopy such that enough solar radiation reaches the ground, encouraging the growth of vegetation among the understory. The vast growth of vegetation allows for significant increases in the amount of composition seen in the soil beneath the brush. This provides plants with enough organic material to flourish. The biodiversity found within these forests is vast. The forests contain two layers generally, an understory and an overstory, or canopy. The most common species, trees making the above canopy, are carnivores, while the understory mainly consists of herbaceous grasses, skinny leaf shrubs, and ferns. Shrublands. Due to the temperature and moisture at extremes, shrublands usually consist of shrubs and short trees stunted by growth. The shrubland summers are hot and dry with temperatures up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and temperatures are cold and moist, usually below 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Vegetation such as shrubs, grasses, and other herbs are commonly found in the dry soil. Because of the little vegetation and minimal moisture content, shrublands are highly susceptible to human activity. Physical site characteristics. The north slope has an average elevation of 2,929 feet and faces north 20 degrees east. This aspect provides the slope with less solar radiation throughout the year and this is easily noticeable. Cooler temperatures and more moisture in the soil and the air provide the north slope with ideal conditions for tree and understory growth. And many of diverse communities thrive here. In the south aspect, we approach a higher elevation of 3,206 feet facing south 10 degrees east. The south receives much more solar radiation than the north, and this is apparent due to the lack of understory, topsoil, and tree density. Because of these conditions, soil cannot support the lush understory seen on the north. North Slope Forest Communities Since the north slope aspect provides more shade, and moisture, a diverse, diverse ecosystem of plant and animal species reside in the thick, cool understory. The north slope is mainly dominated by Douglas fir, but is also surrounded by many western larch and ponderosa pine populations. The canopy is rather thick, and the density of the trees on the northern slope is characterized by 158 trees per acre. The understory is shaded, moist, nutrient-rich environment that allows for many species of plants to grow sufficiently. Many species of mushroom grow here as well. Soil characteristics. Due to the shaded region, the soil is cooler and contains more moisture than the south. Because of the shaded canopy, the soil experiences less leaching, which allows for the abundance of plants to take advantage of the rich nitrogenated soils. More nitrogen in the soil allows for increased plant growth, as nitrogen is a key ingredient in the development of plants. The wildlife. The lush north slope provides an abundance of food and protection cover for the for a variety of animals seen on Kamiak Butte. Small mammals like mice, rabbits, chipmunks, and even porcupines find cover in the understory. Amongst the treetops, bird species like woodpeckers, hop, and hawks, and squirrels find shelter in the above ground. Several species of deer graze in the lush understory, understory of the north slope, including some moose. On the south aspect, is dominated mostly by ponderosa pine, which is a pine species notorious for being able to grow in minimal soil conditions. These pines are distributed sparsely along the slope, having only 35 trees per acre, compared to the north's 158. 
There is little to no canopy coverage as these trees are further apart and the soil is too shallow and the slope is too steep for, starters, for larger trees to grow efficiently. The understory of the south slope is grassland. A few grass species dominate the landscape. These tall grasses provide little protection to any animals in the open and a few shrub species can also be found growing along the south slope. Intermingled with colorful wildflowers in the spring, the south slope's shallow, dry soil makes it difficult for a diverse plant community to grow and survive. Soil characteristics. Due to increased solar radiation, the soil in the south aspect is much drier than the north. The decreased density of plant material is apparent because these soils are very shallow. Many rocky outcrops can be seen along, along the ridge, and this provides little to no stable ground for plant growth. Wildlife. The wide open grassland provides many species of small mammals such as field mice, voles, and rabbits food and resources. This comes as a price as predatory birds like hawks and eagles tend to prey on the mammals amongst the tall grasses. These grasses provide perfect grazing grounds for several small species of deer and even moose. Although the conditions of the south slope are less of its northern aspect, the grassland still provides enough resources for many of the plant and animals that call it home. Rodents and other small animals on Kamiak Butte. A variety of squirrels can be spotted amongst the grass and trees at Kamiak Butte. Grand squirrels and red squirrels are among the two common species living here. Mostly active during the day, the ground squirrel prefers open grasslands where they can survey their surroundings. These little ones eat plenty of fruits, seeds, and nuts, and insects found on the slope. Because of the limited protection of the grassland, the squirrels burrow into the ground for protection and food storage. Mice, several species of mice, call Kamiak Butte home. The open grasslands of the south aspect provide mice and rats, both plant and animal-based foods. Species like the deer mice find resources in a variety of seeds, grains, and other plant material, including smaller invertebrates and carrion. Many try to hide amongst the thicker understory within burrows or made by similar species. Porcupines can primarily be found in the dense, moist, forested slope of Kamiak Butte, but also venture into the dry, hot shrubland steppe. Porcupines move slowly and do not see clearly, but they rely on sense of smell and hearing to navigate. The dense forest slope of Kamiak Butte offers porcupines a variety of natural wood, bark, and stems for porcupines to chew on. Rabbits. The lush understory of the north slope, along with the futile grasslands of the south aspect, provides many resources for multiple rabbit species and populations. The mountain cottontail rabbit mainly resides in the wooden brushy slopes, often full of grasses and other small brush. Along with the cottontail, white and black-tailed jackrabbits also use the butte as home for similar reasons. If vegetation is sparse, these rabbits will hide in burrows and rock crevices, which can be found on the slope of Kamiat Butte. These rabbits feed in or near cover of the brush for predatory concealment and prefer grasses, but will eat other berries and bushes if grass is sparse. Carnivores. The large biodiversity in small mammals on Kamiak Butte offers a wide selection of food choice for many predators that call Kamiak Butte home. Coyotes were restricted to brushlands and mountainlands, but have adapted to take advantage of the recent human developments and expanded their territories into more urban environments, causing issues with farmers and ranchers. Coyotes feed on small mammals such as rabbits, mice, squirrel, voles, and moles. They use scent to track down their prey amongst the tall grasses and the shrubland and can be found digging in small mammal burrows. When not hibernating in the winter months, black bears can be seen scavenging along the butte for various resources. Along these bears, Along these, bears prefer strong forest cover, though they are known to roam clearings and grass shrubs. In the spring, black bear diet is primarily consists of a variety of insects, grasses, and berries, and flowering plants. Among all the vegetation, black bears are also known to eat small ground mammals like squirrels, voles, and moles, along with elk, calves, fish, and eggs, and various animal carrion. Raccoons have adapted to a variety of climates and habitats, which makes Kamiat Butte a perfect home. They typically make homes through dens and trees and caves or man-made structures. As omnivores, these raccoons find nutrients in plants and animals. Fruits, nuts, seeds, and berries consists are major vegetation requirements for these raccoons. When it comes to meat, most raccoons prefer frogs, insects, eggs, and small rodents. The ungulates on Kamiak Butte, the grass provides of a diverse ecosystem for members of the ungulate class to roam and graze. 
Deer species found on Kamiak Butte are that of the mule deer and the white-tailed deer. Both species have similar grazing and environmental habits. The deer use these grass to graze and feed on herbaceous plant and leaf wood material. The deer are picky eaters and will not just eat grasses all day. The deer need a higher nutrient food source than other grass feeders. Because of this, they thrive with diverse extent plant communities, which the Butte strongly offers. Moose. The American moose has been spotted on Kamek Butte grazing in the lush understory and grassland. These herbivores primarily eat twigs, barks, roots, and shoots of woody plants. The diverse forest community of northern Kamiak Butte provides the moose with a variety of plant and tree species, such as firs, pines, and larches, to find appealing. During the day, they can be found feeding within the forest regions. Moose move fast on land and can cover vast distances for food resource finding. Birds and bats. Many bat species can be found on Kamiak Butte. The most common found are several variety of myotids. They have they have called the Butte their home, the California Myotis and Silver-Haired Myotis, and everything in between. These bats find refuge in rock crevices found in the slope, as well as tree hollows on the northern slope. Bats are nocturnal, meaning that they hunt at night and sleep during the day. These bats mainly feed off of insects. The cooler, wetter, dense northern slope of Kamiak Butte provides grounds for a plethora of insect species that the bats can feast upon. Birds of prey. Kamiak Butte is home to several birds of prey species such as owls, raptors, and hawks to include the bald eagle and red-tailed hawk. These birds and predators are that hunt mice, rabbits, insects, and other small rodents. Many of these birds make nests among the canopies and these large birds can be found surrounding the above open grassland scouring for food or perched atop a tall tree. Kamiak Butte provides a habitat for a plethora of songbirds. These birds live in a variety of environments from open grasslands to dense forests. These songbirds mainly eat insects, nuts, seeds, and various fruits and berries. Songbirds on Kamiak Butte are the black-billed magpie, American robin, horned lark, and many others of wren and sparrow. Landfowl. Several species of turkey and grouse have been spotted in the short grassland of Kamiak Butte. Here they can forage for plant matter such as grasses, leaves, fruits, seeds, and insects, snakes, worms, or even small rodents. Kamiak Butte provides a diverse platter of food options for the varying bird species.